the Trans Lab Shift Kit video part two. All right, all these hull sizes are in the instructions. You could kind of mark the plate like this to, to show you what holes to drill. Um, I usually start with the small ones. I've drilled this hole to, to uh, 55 thousandths as per the instructions. Um, the rest of them are different sizes, but I, I do all the same sizes at once. So that one hole is going to be a 67, as are these two holes in the other separator plate. This next hole is 93,000. And this other hole, what we're going to do is make the factory hole a lot bigger. Then we're going to install a plug into it and then drill it smaller. So basically, we're going to end up reducing that hole size. This is a step a lot of people mess up. Um, They'll do something like not drill this out after they put the plug in and, and it'll give you no reverse. Or they'll call up and, and, you know, based on these instructions, it tells you based on what size band you have is how you have to drill this hole. Now, almost everybody here is using what's going to be the wide band, which is, which is your uh, turbo transmission, okay? So the final hole is, is going to get drilled to a... Uh, number 35 drill bit which is 110 thousandths. But anyway, these are the steps. First we drill that. And what I like to do is get a bigger drill bit, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, doesn't really matter. And I just uh, kind of touch these hole size on both sides. Okay, so what I've done is put a a bevel on both sides because that's going to enable it to hold the plug better. Now when you put the plug in you want a real hard flat surface. Okay, This plug comes in the shift kit so what you're going to want to do is lay the plug down on your, your flat surface and you want to get this side of the separator plate because it goes up against the trans case. This is going to save you some trouble. I'm going to put this down over the plug. Okay. We're always going to start from the other side. What we're going to do is, is this several times. And that's going to expand the plug into that hole. Okay, and you want to make sure it's in there nice and tight. Also, in the instructions, it tells you once you do this to file the plate because it's going to be sticking up a little bit. And this isn't in the instructions. I like to get something sharp and just kind of find the middle of this plug and make a little dimple in it. At which point I'm going to get a small drill bit. A sixteenth of an inch usually works pretty well. And I'm going to drill through with that. All right, that's going to make it a lot easier to keep everything more nicely centered when we drill it out to 110 thousandths, which is a number 35 drill bit. This is what it's supposed to look like when it's done. At that point, I'm going to get another drill bit. And all these holes that I've drilled, I just give them a quick chamfer on both sides. I find I'm not going to interfere with anything, but it's just kind of a nicer way to do it. Just a habit I've been in over the years. Oh, 
and it looks like we uh, missed one of the holes, so let me do that one. Be this one here, which is also 93 thousandths or a number 42 drill bit. And these drill bits all come in the kit, except for the uh, two larger ones. But those are, you know, stuff you probably have laying around, a regular fractional drill. Okay, so we have our one, two, three, four, five, six holes in this plate, and two in the small plate, and that's it for drilling holes. All right, we're going to start changing our springs now, and do these one at a time. Don't start taking the whole valve body apart. We're going to work with one valve and spring at a time so nothing gets confused or put in the wrong spot. Okay, we're starting with the end clutch control valve, and this is kind of a little tricky to get out. There's a little pin that retains it, and what you have to do is turn the valve body over and kind of press on the end plug a bit. kind of vibrate the pin out, you'll hear it fall like that, okay? Okay, after the retainer comes out and the pin, there's going to be another piece in here. It's kind of like a spring seat. So you're going to have to grab that with needle nose pliers and kind of walk that out. Sometimes they're a little tough to get out, but just be gentle and, and uh, it'll come out. Underneath here is your end clutch control spring. Shake it, the valve is going to come out. Okay. This is how everything sits in there. So this spring we're going to replace with the yellow spring from the shift kit. And another thing to note, I mean I, I've done all this already, but each time you get a valve out you want to spray it with a little brake clean and also spray out its bore and clean each one individually. You have to have this super super clean, otherwise you're going to have valve stick. And, and another thing you want to take note of is a valve when you put it in has to fall with its own weight to the bottom of the bore. I don't know if you can hear that. If it's not doing that, it's not free and you have to clean it up some more. Alright, now we put our spring. And our end spring retainer. Now this end cap, kind of have to push it in perfectly straight. And when this big hole lines up with the pin, it'll drop in. And then the same thing is when you take it out, you have to vibrate it a little bit and it'll kind of walk down in there. Okay, next, we're going to take off this end cap. This is what it looks like. You also have an adjuster for your reducing pressure valve spring. This valve body is a 1G, so there's a difference between the 1G and the 2G in this area. This converter control valve is simply going to have a plug in a 1G unit. If this was a 2G, you'd be removing this valve and you'd be putting a brown spring underneath it. This next valve, we don't have to do anything with, but I'm going to take it out and, and show you how it goes in there in case it falls out on you and, and you have to know how to put it back together. Get the spring first and then the valve. 
Okay, next is your reducing pressure valve. You don't have to take it out, you can just change the spring, but I like to, as I said before, clean it up and, and make sure everything is in there freely. Now with this valve, the shift kit's going to give you a choice between a light blue spring and a dark blue spring. I don't know, based on diameter of the valve. But to be honest with you, I've never ever used anything besides the dark blue spring. Okay, now you're going to put this back on. This whole retainer has to sit inside the valve. So we have to kind of push this on and sneak one of the bolts in here. Once you have the one bolt in, you can put your other two. Tighten them down. Just be careful, you want to make sure everything's going in there straight. Okay? In the shift kit, they talk about an adjustment for this valve. Okay, changing this spring seat height is going to affect shift firmness. Regardless of what the instructions say, the closer that this piece is to the valve body, the firmer your shift is going to be. So I like to start with a baseline. This is a 4 millimeter socket. You could use pliers if you don't have a 4 millimeter socket. Most people don't. Turning this counterclockwise until the seat contacts the valve body. The adjustment I like to start with is from this point, I then turn it two turns clockwise. Okay, Clockwise loosens the adjustment, counterclockwise makes it tighter. All right. So if you want to play with shift firmness, you want it firmer, you're always going to turn it counterclockwise. You want it softer, you're going to turn it clockwise.